All right, what's up, everybody? We're back with more of Arnhem Escape from the Pit. We just went downstairs to the sewer area where we got a quest from the mayor from. You enter the tunnels under Silvar. Workers have been toiling the burrow toward the water to the south, providing a much-needed channel for the waste and trash of the people above to escape. None of the workers are visible, though. The tunnels have been abandoned. They are eerily quiet. You notice a small pool of green, viscous slime on the floor. It is unpleasantly fresh. Alright, picks and shovels are required for quest 2, so we're going to make sure we get those. Alright, now that my... Now that Xander has a spear, he can actually do a lot more damage with pole weapons, for sure. Ooh, see that? He definitely did quite a bit of destruction there. Okay. I was hoping to search that barrel first, but that's all right that we didn't. We'll go ahead and say real quick that one of the things you have to get used to in this game is the fact that you will be in combat a lot. Yes, there's a lot of dialogue, a lot of story, but you will be in combat a lot. So you do have to accept that and fight as often as you can. Okay, so we took care of those spiny crawlers. Minor heal is honestly a little bit OP, but we'll still use it anyway. If we do want our frontline warriors to stay alive as much as possible. A light humanoid figure steps out of the shadows. He moves to the center of the crude magical circle he etched into the floor. You realize that he is a Nephil, and judging from the many tokens, trinkets and bits of bone he is wearing he is the shaman Brrr, he purrs the humans send a warrior to challenge me well you have found Drachnar of the split tail clan you have found your death Brrr. they're in a film down here yes you humans sent us down here into this pit where we are never warm and never clean and always want for milk for this we will have our vengeance Rawr. Actually, it's the Empire who sent them down here, not the Avernites. Sadly, Drachnar doesn't seem to be interested in discussing such political fine points. Actually, I was just trying to find out where all these worms come from. Drachnar favors you with a fanged grin. His tail twitches gleefully from side to side. You have found the source. They are called with my magic and filled with furious lust for human blood. Soon, I will create a swarm of worms. They will emerge and drive the humans from this place, and the Split-Tail Clan will claim a great victory. Swarm? Isn't the technical term for a group of worms a bed? Arr, yes, 
You can also call a group of worms a clue. However, neither of these words carries the right level of menace. No human will tremble at the thought of being devoured by a bed of monsters. Rawr. You can breed worms? I can. It is a gift I discovered in the underworld. It is disgusting, and my fur is never properly clean. Also, the smell. But I will withstand all for the greater victory of the split tail clan. You will never triumph, villain. As you charge, Drachnar begins to hum a low chant. You hear the hissing of worms coming behind you. The shaman must have the power to call them. That's one mystery solved. up my uh, zombie that I summoned to uh, take more damage here. One thing I forgot we can do is also put on this cloak of curses. Uh... Since we have two fighters anyway, it would actually will be pretty effective. Drachnar stares down at his wounds with disbelief. Then he lets out a long howl. Come, rawr! Come, my foul children. Come and aid your protector and feed! Crap. Uh, we'll definitely need to heal him up here in a moment. But yeah, Cloak of Curse is actually really good. One of your characters has been afflicted with poison or acid. This will damage the character every turn until it fades away or is cured. The priest spell curing can reduce the amount of poison or acid afflicting you. Curing potions and certain other items can also help. Okay, we don't really have a curing potion to use, so we'll just do that. Let's go ahead and do this. So we killed Drachnar finally. Is there any more over here? Yeah. We can dispose of them, no problem. Okay, found a fish back here, but that was about it. I know some of the some of the stuff I'm storing in my junk bag is uh, 
doesn't only have a value of like 20, not really that much. But then again, every little bit helps, right? That's actually very useful, so I'll put, up, put that on her. So now Beatrix has a... has a special ability. We will explore more down here in a moment, but let's go ahead and complete our quest. Your warm infestation was called by a Nephil named Drachnar. He is dead. How very interesting. Our feline foes are becoming more ingenious in finding ways to assault us. And, as promised, here is a reward. He removes the silver ring from his hand and presents it to you. It is enchanted, and also, as promised, I have advice. You said you have advice to give me? Two pieces. First, you should know that there is an enchanted pylon in the tunnels below us. Second, if you wish a true use for your skills, you should travel to the castle far to the southwest in the Great Cave. If you're near that fortress, however, you will need a crown token. Uh, tell me about the pylon. Certain trusted individuals are given the ability to use the magic of these pylons to travel quickly through Avernum. You can learn more about them in the Tower of Magi to the south. Our pylon is in the tunnel network below. In the northeast corner. I'll make sure that the door to it is unlocked for you. Uh, tell me about the castle. King Micah wisely rules a Vernon from there. If you truly wish to do good fighting for your newfound homeland, that is where you should go. How do I get a crown token? You find a mayor who has one to present and you earn it. It is how you prove you can be trusted to spend time with our king. Alas, I do not have one to give. But the mayor of Formello to the north does. You should go north and speak with her. If the rumors I have heard are true, she has a task that may be worth your effort. Okay, so we got some experience. We also got a band that offers cold resistance. Okay, my fighters are actually very good when it comes to hardiness, so we're going to give this to... Beatrix instead. Alright, before we head off, we're gonna first expect more of the sewer, because he did say a portal pylon was down here. Worms are pretty easy at this point, so I'm just going to go ahead and not waste spell energy right now. We do have a pick and a hammer. We'll pick that up for our quest. Pick some shovels is the one we have right now, but we will get more of the same, more in the same vein here later anyway. We can't use this uh, pylon right now, but it will come into play later. So make sure you at least touch it before you 
uh, before you leave anywhere else. Actually, he's low on spell energy, so let's go ahead and give that to him temporarily. This stone worker doesn't respond when you approach. Mages tend to create these constructs to do heavy lifting for them. Once the animating wizard departs, a mindless creation is left to crumble silently, silently away. Some kind-hearted people feel that this conduct is cruel mistreatment of these creatures' objects. Agitating too loudly about this in the Empire is one good way to earn a free trip to Avernum. Alright, can't cast an increase spell, so we'll use this. Ooh, Beatrix leveled up, that's that's cool. Give that back to her in case she needs it. All right, got a curing potion, got more weapons. got a little bit more experience too nice all right that's all we needed to do here so we're gonna head out move on a small group of goblins is camped at the base of the east wall they watch you warily as you approach. There aren't too many of them, and they aren't well armed. They also don't seem to want to fight. You know what, we're close to leveling up anyway, so let's go and attack. I mean, I should have kept the, let's just skip turn for now. Give that to him back. Oh, one spell you can also do, I should use this more often, is uh, the spell Day. That was actually very handy. We got everybody leveled up too, because of that. Nice. So yeah, this is exactly why I like uh, letting my spellcasters hang on to the scrolls and wands and stuff, because it 
because fell energy and sparse and you definitely want to make do with what you can you search the goblin camp they were desperately poor but you do find a handful of grimy copper coins all right let's go ahead and level this up level this and the level of hardiness because we do still want to be able to tank pretty well too that's why i'm putting points into hardiness uh, point into intelligence until we get to 17, I'm always going to put at least one point into free spells and stuff like that, so... We, we'll definitely stop it when uh, we get to the maximum level of 17, though. But every time you level up, you do want to put at least one point into the, uh, the mage and priest respective category. Or whoever it is. We're going to put a point to resistance because it's basically uh, the spellcaster's version of hardiness, pretty much. Same thing here, pretty much. Now, unlike hardiness, it doesn't protect you from too much stuff, but resistance does help you resists mental effects a lot more which is very very handy so there is that all right make sure we did that right, all right we did so let's go ahead and head in here all right i'm gonna save the game right here but i'll be back soon with the next part